By the end of this video, you will be able to make an amazing group logo just like this one. A great group logo helps your group look more professional and helps you get tons more members. The eye-catching simple logo of Big Games is a great example of this. This logo would take barely any effort to make, but it has gotten them millions of members. This is why a great logo is extremely important. First, we need to go to photop.com. Photop is basically a free version of Photoshop, and it's crazy that it's free because this is such a powerful software you could make any design you wanted in here and it would look great so you can go ahead and open this at photop.com the link will be on the screen if you want to know how to spell it and it'll also be in the description so first we need to make a new project so go ahead and click new project and we need to make the size so the size we're just gonna make this 512 by 512 and that'll be a good size to start with now what we need to do is we need to grab a background image from Google and download it or we can make one by clicking the sticky note down here at the bottom right inside of the layer panel right here you'll see a sticky note and this will add a new layer above our background right here so click that and you'll see a new layer that will show up right here now to add some color to this you want to go to this tool right here it looks like a little fading line so what we're gonna do is change this to the paint bucket so click and hold and then drag it over to paint bucket and let go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on this to choose a new color. And I'm just going to drag this around. And I think for my background, I'm going to do a nice teal and click OK. Then just click anywhere and it will fill it with that color. Now to add images and search for an image and I can just download an image from here. Some of these might be copyrighted. So if you're going to use this uh, in a group logo, you might want to try and find one that isn't copyrighted. But for this video, for an example, doesn't matter so I think this one looks good so what you can do is just right click it and copy image sometimes this won't work so you can just right click save image as and then go to your downloads folder and you just drag it in or in our case all we're gonna do is paste it back in here so now in photo P you can just click Control V on your keyboard and that will paste the image back in now you might notice that it is totally the wrong size so to resize this make sure that transform controls are checked off on the top left right here and make sure that you have this tool selected by the way then what we're gonna do is is we can just drag this image around until we see these handles. So these handles right here are what let us resize it. So what you wanna do is just grab the handle and drag it and then move it back, grab it, drag it, move it back and do that until you get the right size and just keep repeating that. And I don't want the trees in this, but let's just get a nice view of the water there. Now, one thing we can do, if we wanna add a fading background of color, we can add a gradient to the background by right clicking the layer, clicking blending options and we can choose gradient overlay. So check off gradient overlay and right there, we're going to have a gradient applied to our image. Make sure that you have the gradient overlay selected. So as you can see, I can't edit it right now. Make sure you select it so it's dark here, the background of the box. And then we can click on the gradient right here. And we can also change the opacity of it. As you can see, as I drag this, it gets less visible and more visible. So now we're, I'm just going to click on the gradient thing, gradient box right there. And now you can click on one of these colors and you can change it. So in this window, you can choose the color. I'm going to do that teal again. And then I'm also going to choose a blue. Nice blue and I'm going to click OK. So now we have a nice gradient going and I'm going to change the opacity just a little bit. Kind of makes it look a little bit faded or foggy. Now I'm probably not going to leave this. If you just change your mind, you can go back into blending options and uncheck it or you can click this drop down arrow right here and you can click the eyeball on the gradient overlay to hide it. And with this, you can easily bring it back just by clicking that. Also, if you can't find a great image, a good website to use is called Hixabay. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but you can go there. Link in the description to find some cool free images. Now we can also add other images in here if you'd like. I'm gonna go to that Pixabay website I told you guys about. And in here, I'm gonna search for a game controller. So as you can see, there's a lot of images on here. Just so you know, some of these are ads. So I wouldn't click on these on the top, but a good game controller would be the Xbox one because they let you use Xbox controllers on Roblox. So it makes a lot of sense. So click free download and just choose a size that works. Honestly, the smallest one will be just fine. And now it'll go to your downloads folder. And on a lot of browsers, it'll just show up somewhere on your screen. So I'm just gonna drag this from my downloads into my document. Also, I decided I don't really want this background. So what you can do is you can click the eyeball on this as well to hide it. So now I'm gonna put this controller right about here. I think that's a good spot. Now on objects, a drop shadow can look good. So what you do, this is also in blending options, just like the gradient overlay. So what you do is right click the layer, then click blending options, and then go to drop shadow. And we can change the distance on this, the opacity, size, all kinds of things. Drop shadows look really nice on objects and they make it kind of look like it's floating above the background. Also, if you guys wanna change the order of your layers, 
layers and make some things behind others, you can just drag the layer below something or above something and it will be above it. So as you can see, if I dra drag the teal background layer I have above my controller, it's no longer visible. If I drag it back, I can now see the controller again. Also a quick tip, if you guys wanna change the look of an image really quickly, I'm gonna bring back my ocean really quick to show you guys this example. You guys can change the hue and saturation of an image really easily. So what you do is go back down here where we added in a new layer and go to this little circle that's cut in half and this will make a new adjustment layer. So click this and then up in this menu, there is hue slash saturation. So just click on that. And now if we wanna make this apply just to the layer below it, we can right click it and click clipping mask. This will make it so it only applies to the layer below it. So it'll only apply to my C. So now what I can do is I can drag the saturation and I can make the colors a lot more vibrant. And with the hue, I can just change the colors completely. So now it looks like a sea of lava or even like a sea of lipstick. <laughs> I'd like it to look a little bit more blue. So I'm going to do that. And you can also change the brightness of the image. Pretty cool feature. There's also a lot of other adjustment layers you can mess around with if you want. I like to do the brightness slash contrast one because it just adds a lot of detail sometimes. Crank up the contrast and turn down the brightness just a little bit. Depends on the image. It doesn't look too good here. All right, next is to add text to your logo. I'm going to go ahead and hide this because I don't really want it. So text is probably the most important part of your logo because it gets across the name of your group. And depending on what font you choose, you can set the tone for your entire group. So click the T to activate the text tool on the tools panel right here. And now we can drag anywhere to make a new text box. So click somewhere and then Hold down your mouse button and drag until it's the size you want. And now we can type in here. Edit. As you notice, it might be too small. So what you're going to do is just click Control A on your keyboard to select it all and then drag up the size. So now I'm just going to type in something like cool. OK, I know, guys, the group I'm the example the group I'm doing is cool games. Most uncreative thing I've ever done, but it's OK for the video. So cool games, the best new group. It's going to have 100,000 members on Roblox. So in Photo P, they have quite a few fonts you can choose. You can just scroll through these until you see something you like. Go ahead and test it out. That looks good for what we're doing. So I'm going to click Control A and then I'm going to change the size back down. And I feel like this would look a lot better with a white color. So to change the color of your text, click Control A, click on the color at the very top right here, and then click and drag and change it to white or whatever color you want. Now, you might notice that this is kind of hard to read on the background, but this is where a feature called strokes come in. So a stroke is just an outline around something and and we can also add this through the blending options menu that we looked at before. So right click the layer you're using, click blending options, and then click stroke, check off stroke, and then make sure that you select it so that you can edit the stroke. So we can change the color of the stroke right here. Then we can drag to the color we want. Or if you click anywhere in here, you can actually take a color from the image and use that. For mine, I'm just going to click on the gray of the controller so it'll match. Click OK. Now, I think I also do want my text to curve. This is a little bit more advanced, but if you click on your text again, click Control A and then select Warp up here. You can actually add a bend to your text. So I'm going to change the style right here to Arc and then I'm just going to drag the bend down just a little bit and you can change a lot of different factors here. I'm just going to leave this at zero so I can keep it simple and click OK. And now I'm just going to drag my controller to the center and what I want to do is I want to copy this layer. So to copy a layer you can just right click the layer and click Duplicate Layer or you can just click Control C and then click Control V. Or another way, there's three ways to do this. You can hold Alt and you can drag. You can drag from anywhere on the layer to duplicate it. So I'm just gonna drag this to the bottom. And what I wanna do is I wanna make the arc the opposite. So I'm gonna double click the text, select it, or click Control A. And then I'm gonna go to warp and I'm just gonna go add a negative sign at the beginning of the percentage here. So it's a negative 14%. And I'm gonna just reposition this. And now I'm gonna double click the text again, click Control A, and I'm gonna type in games. Now I'm gonna click Control A again, and and I'm gonna go up to size and just drag that down until it fits. I think I'm also gonna add a gradient to my bottom layer. It's just looking a little bit off without it. It's very subtle, but it's looking a bit better. Now I'm also gonna add a rotation to my controller. So to do that, you can just go right outside of one of the handles and you can click and drag and you can change the rotation of the image. And I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and it's looking pretty good. Now this isn't really my best example of logo. If I had spent a lot more time on this, I could make it look a lot better. For example, you can hold Alt and you can make a copy of one of the layers 
layers, the text layers, and you can size this up just a little bit. Then on the layer below it, you can right click blending options, go to color overlay, check that off and then select it and then change the color to the same color as the stroke. And you can add a bit of a shadow that kind of goes out like that. It's a really easy trick to make something that looks a lot better. So I'm going to do the same for the top, except I'm going to make it go down. Size that up a little bit. Click on the cool tag, right click blending options, go to color overlay and it's saved for my last one. So that's cool. <laughs> no pun intended. I'm going to rotate my controller a little bit more. So I think so far this is actually looking really good. It's better than I actually expected. So now to save your image, you can go to file at the very top left, click save as PSD. Saving as a PSD will save it as an editable format, basically meaning that all your layers and everything will save, but you cannot upload this as an image to Roblox. To make this an image that you can upload, go to export as and then PNG and then save it to your computer. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And for an easy way to make Robux from your group, you can click the video on screen to learn how to make your own shirt and sell it in your group. See you guys there.